This is our teaching video for the fourth Sunday after Epiphany, February the 1st, 2015. In this video today, we're going to talk about Torah, especially because our first reading is going to be from the last book of Torah, which is Deuteronomy. Second, we're going to take another trip to Corinth with Paul and talk about idols, idolatry, sacrificing food. And that's actually going to lead us to the third, which is unclean spirits and demons. And so we're actually going to make a connection between some of what Paul says about idols, and then we're going to look at Jesus' first public miracle, at least in the Gospel of Mark, the healing of a person with an unclean spirit in the synagogue of Capernaum. Now this is a little bit of Bible trivia, but you probably know that in Hebrew, the Bible books are named after the first couple words. So the book of Deuteronomy is called Devarim, uh, which refers to a phrase at the beginning of the book about these words that are spoken. Our English name Deuteronomy is actually a translation and Deuteronomy will refer to a copy of the law, sometimes referred to the second law, which is a little bit of a mistranslation, but a copy of the law. So when we get Deuteronomy, we're getting the story of the law being transmitted, and it's really everything up until the time that Moses dies, and at Moses' death we are left at the threshold of the Promised Land with the question, and it's really left as a question whether the people will be faithful or not. So Deuteronomy being the copy of the law. Now the reading that we have on Sunday is going to be about the prophet and the spirit of the prophet and so between all three readings we can talk about uh, clean spirits and unclean spirits. But what I want to mention to you now is that in the first five books of the Bible we have the Torah. So we call it the Pentateuch because we use a lot of Greek words. Torah is the Hebrew word for instruction. So as you probably know from your Sunday school days, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and our reading for Sunday and the book for Sunday, Deuteronomy. Now we know that the books Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy uh, all follow the story of the people being set free from slavery in Egypt and the giving of the law. So we have the experience of Passover and Mount Sinai and Exodus. We have the priestly manual of Leviticus. We have the people as it relates to uh, censuses and counting and numbers, uh, and also then the copy of the law in Deuteronomy. Now, that leads us, or leaves us, with the book Genesis. And one of the things we can say about Genesis is the book of Genesis is pre-law, meaning that the people we see in that story have a relationship with God that is not mediated through Moses. Now, why is that important? Because when we get to the story of Jesus, and when we get to the story of Christianity, one of the questions that gets asked is, can we have a relationship with God through Jesus that is not mediated through the law given to Moses? This is one of the questions that Paul is asking in the book of Romans and in other places. And one of the answers they say is yes, and they look at Genesis. And in fact, not only do they look at Genesis, but they look at Abraham. Yes, it's possible to have a relationship with this God. We can have faith in the promises of this God and look at Abraham. That's why Paul will call us not children of Moses. We are not children of the law. and We are not genetically Jewish children, but rather children of the, children of the promise in the same way that Abraham believed what God said and it was reckoned to him as faith. So too we believe what God has said to us in Jesus and it is reckoned to us as faith. And so for Christians, the fact that Genesis is pre-giving of the law is enormously significant for what we have to say later about Jesus. When we get to the reading in Deuteronomy and when we get to the reading in 1 Corinthians and in Mark, we're going to be dealing with the question of spirit, or we might even say that's a question of spirits. And traditionally that gets broken down into two different categories, clean spirits, unclean spirits. And this is enormously important to understand that the law that does get given in Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, the law that gets given breaks up into these categories, clean and unclean. And we might say that the clean spirit is the spirit that finally leads to life. The unclean spirit is the spirit that finally leads to death or destruction. Now notice, in the Gospel of Mark this Sunday, it's not going to be called a demon, it's going to be called an unclean spirit. And so one thing we can say is, demons get associated with unclean spirits, um, especially in the Gospels, 
But prior to this time, especially in the Old Testament, we only get this distinction of clean and unclean spirits. The demons that get referred to are goat demons, Azazel, and in fact we can say that the goat demon of the Old Testament will be connected to the scapegoat and scapegoating. And that only later do we have kind of a fully developed picture of demons as fallen angels uh, or demons as creatures who are malevolent. Notice the demon or the unclean spirit in Mark doesn't cause a person to sin, but rather causes a person to be ill, causes a person to be physically uh, tied up, deformed, uh, or uh, blind or deaf, something like that. So we see the unclean spirit actually malforming the human person. All right, so we're just going to bounce around with that a little bit, just to give you a little bit more context, and of course we'll talk about it more in the sermon on Sunday. Jesus' first public miracle in the Gospel of Mark happens here at Capernaum. And if you remember, this is where Jesus returns to after his baptism. He calls the disciples on the Sea of Galilee, and now he does his first public miracle in Capernaum. It happens on the Sabbath. It happens during a time of teaching. And Jesus isn't just a guy that knows how to read all the books. Jesus is a guy who, when the word of God is spoken, it comes with power. And so one of the things that we'll hear on Sunday, Jesus teaches with authority. He doesn't just teach uh, as a kind of virtuoso who knows all the texts. The very power of the word of God comes through him as he sets people free from unclean spirits and his fame will spread. Now, as I mentioned to you, one of the things we'll hear in the Old Testament are goat demons, and oftentimes the goat demons are those who dwell in ruins. One thing we can also say is it's either ruins, the wilderness, or a cemetery. This is the cemetery on the Mount of Olives. And it's this idea that there are certain places that represent destruction or decay or the dismantling of God's good creation where you are susceptible to receiving uh, unclean spirits. So cemeteries, wilderness, and ruins. Making sort of a modern connection, some of you are probably familiar with the Krampus, this sort of uh, goat demon that comes at Christmas on St. Nicholas Day and punishes bad children. The reason I bring this up is this is something that's now kind of entering into American life. It was really sort of a Central European thing, uh, but this last Christmas the Krampus appeared. And this is actually a Krampus from uh, a parade in Europe. But don't be surprised in Christmas to come if you see more of the Krampus. And I think as more people are sort of disillusioned with Christmas as a purely commercial holiday, for those who don't celebrate uh, Christmas as a Christian holiday, uh, as the Coca-Cola Christmas sort of disappears in our culture, don't be surprised if you see more of Krampus, the goat demon, and whether he's related to uh, the goat demon of the Old Testament. That might be an interesting question, uh, but it goes back to a long time in the human past, in the human memory past, uh, where such creatures appeared to roam the earth. And so sometimes we think of the Bible and the stories of the Bible as something quite primitive and ancient, uh, but even now in our own time, some of these faces are re-emerging. Well, one place this conversation is going to happen is when Paul is talking to the Corinthians again. And since I've shown you several pictures of his journeys, now I'm just showing you a satellite picture of Corinth, and you see why it was such an important harbor city. You had boats coming on this side. Oftentimes they would unload their freight and then pick them up on this side, and that would save people from sailing around the Peloponnesus. And remember, sailing was fairly primitive at this time, so oftentimes people stayed close to the shore, and this could save you quite a bit of time transporting your cargo across the isthmus. Now, one of the things that Paul says to the Corinthians on Sunday is he talks about food sacrificed to idols and how Christians are to respond to this. And it actually will be a great reflection on community and life together that we'll talk about more in the sermon. Paul talks about the various idols that people have, and he says a couple things. He says, well, we know idols are made by human hands, so they're not real. Some people's consciences are bothered by idols, though. And he says, if they're bothered by it, don't do it. For the sake of the weaker brother, don't do it. But he also then makes the comment, not only are idols handmade, but sometimes idols represent uh, so-called gods in heaven and on earth. And so there's a great tradition to see idols, if they're active, say like the Oracle of Delphi, to be inspired by a demonic spirit. And of course, the demonic spirit is one that has knowledge but no love of God, which is why the demons know so much but still don't love. We'll gather then on Sunday, consider what it means to live in community, what it means to bear with the weaker brother or sister in the faith, and we'll talk about spirits, what spirit is in us, a clean spirit, an unclean spirit, 
And when we hear Deuteronomy, uh, you know, how is it that we speak for God and do so faithfully? We'll see you on Sunday.